What's up guys? Today we're going to be going over arterial versus venous insufficiency ulcers and this is probably the most common ulcers that you're going to see on the board. So there's going to be a lot of questions or at least a handful of questions or what might seem like a lot of questions about um, the difference between arterial versus venous insufficiency because just there's a lot of things that could trip you up on this. So getting started today, the first thing I want to talk about is that there are certain characteristics of arteries and veins that pretty much like explain why all of these characteristics are the way they are. So I'm going to go over these real quick before we get started. So let's start with arteries. In the artery, the pulse is still present. So we obviously use any sort of our like arteries to take our pulse. So like our carotid artery, we'll use our radial artery, stuff like that to be able to feel our pulse because they're actually present in arteries. In veins, there's not a pulse because there's no blood pressure down there. So again, there's blood pressure in your arteries. So the blood pressure is kind of high and that should be normal because that means blood's flowing. In veins, there's low to no blood pressure because the veins are getting blood back to the heart through their valves and then also through like the muscle pump. So they don't need blood pressure because they got those other mechanisms to get it back. The blood in the arteries tends to be pretty warm because it is just circulated through the heart and through the central part of our body, where it's the warmest. While in the veins, it's gone to the extremities. It's lost um, a lot of heat to the environment or even through like just general um, gas exchange and stuff like that. So it's a little bit lower, but ends up just being whatever the temperature of that body part is. The vessel walls of arteries are very thick. That is why we have the pulse going on because they can expand and contract and they have the ability to do that due to the fact that there is a lot of muscle going on through there. Um, the veins have very thin walls, which means that it's very easy for things to leak out of them because they're not as strong or as thick um, as the arteries are. Remember in the arteries, I believe it's the tunica media that is the big, big part of the artery. That's the big meaty part. Um, veins don't have that. And then arteries don't have valves. And then the valves are present in veins to help them get blood back to the heart. So now that we got that squared out of the way, let's dive into it. And we're going to see lots of wounds today, but it's going to help you conceptualize each part of the characteristic of the wound. So then you can kind of get a better feel of, um, what it's going to look like or what kind of words are going to be used. And you can see an actual description of it. So then it's not as confusing. Now the boards might give you a question where they have a picture of a wound such as this. And for example, with this venous insufficiency ulcer on the right here, that is like very, very, very obviously a venous insufficiency ulcer. You see the regular edges. It's got a really, really shallow wound bed and everything. And it's that like brownish, brawny, flaky kind of thing on the above the medial malleolus. That is like there's no, like, it's definitely a venous insufficiency ulcer. So there's like no way around it. That might be a picture that shows up on the boards for you. But when it comes to the general appearance of the wounds, um, let's go over to the arterial wounds. So they're going to be on the lateral side. So the lateral malleolus. And I literally thought of this as my cousin, Al, Allie, A-L. So arterial, lateral. That's how I thought of it. If that helps you, awesome. And then Venus is the other one. Um, so uh, arterial is most likely going to show up on the above the lateral malleolus. It might show up on the dorsum of the foot or in the great toe. But that's generally kind of the area that'll show up. I would say mostly for the boards, they want to keep it simple and just say around the lateral malleolus. Um, you can see on the arterial wound over here that there is it is a smooth circle around this black part. That means that this black part is obviously dying because there's no blood flow to the area. So there's absolutely no granulation tissue. Remember that granulation tissue? If you look over here on the right side with this venous ulcer, is that like white pinkish stuff? That means that skin is growing back. Skin is not growing back over here. It is dying. So we can see that it is a very well-defined circle, that there's really just this thin line between it. We got this just very pretty obvious that this is just all the parts of the ulcer or here for the lateral, um, for the arterial. And then for the venous, obviously above the, the medial malleolus, because this is the instep of the medial longitudinal arch over here of the foot. So we know that this is the medial side. And again, weird shape, irregular borders is a big one. And then it's more shallow. So it's not going down as deep. Now you can't see it on this one of the arterial, but I'll show you on the next 
picture. So you can see um, this next picture on the right, how shallow this wound bed is, and then how much deeper it goes for the arterial one on the left. So when it comes to the exudate or edema going on in here, now these are not synonymous. The exudate is what's leaking out of the wound, and then the edema is how much swelling there is. So when it comes to an arterial ulcer, there's going to be minimal exudate coming out of the wound because the blood, it can't really leak well out of a thick arterial wall. So, but there's still going to be some edema going on because there is a wound and there's a trauma and there's some sort of uh, inflammation going on. So they're going to have like a normal amount of edema if you had any sort of like bump or whatnot. So like, let's say this person had like sprained their ankle, it would probably be about the same size as that. So this is a normal amount of edema for some sort of wound going on. And then over here for Venus, now this person, this picture, all these pictures are from Google. This person over here has both chronic ins venous insufficiency as well as a deep vein thrombosis. So this is kind of an extreme example, but I feel like this is really good at showing you how much that their edema, so all the swelling in the leg can blow up the leg. And then also how, look, you can see how shiny it is with all the exudates leaking out of it. I call venous insufficiency ulcers leaky legs. Um, that's kind of an inside joke for my class. But I mean, it, it helps me remember it so much. Um, and so that, there's a lot of exudate. And so a wound dressing that you would use for this would be a calcium alginate dressing because that is really, really, really good at soaking up a ton and ton of exudate. And this one is not going to stop because remember, the veins are insufficient. So everything's leaking out of them. And then also there's no way to get the edema out because the valves might be messed up as well. So again, with this person, calcium alginate dressing, and this would benefit from elevating the leg. Now you can elevate a venous insufficiency ulcer that will help them out. If you elevate an arterial insufficiency ulcer, the person's going to yell at you. Um, it's not going to feel good. This Elevating this is going to cause a lot of pain. Elevating this is going to help a lot. So skin temperature and tissue changes. So remember, as I said earlier, the blood that is coming from the arteries is still warm. So if it's not getting to where it needs to go, it's gonna to start to cool off. So if you're gonna be feeling the area around the tissue, it's going to be um, not as warm. I wouldn't say cold, but it's just, there's a decrease in skin temperature with arterial insufficiency ulcers because blood is essentially getting blocked and can't get to where it needs to go. So it ends up getting blocked and ends up dying. The tissue ends up dying over here. So that's not good. So again, some of the changes you're going to be seeing with the skin itself with an arterial insufficiency ulcer. So you can see that it's starting to turn yellowish. You can see how shiny it is over here. That's another thing that's going to happen. You can see on this person's leg over here, you can see a couple hairs on the, I guess, I think this is their left leg. And then on their right leg over here, there is absolutely no hair. So they're going to lose hair because there's no nutrients going to the hair to keep the hair follicle alive. So it's just going to fall off. It's like, well, I'm dead anyway, so bye. Um, and so we have decreased blood flow to the area that's causing all of that to happen. And then over on the other side with the venous insufficiency ulcer, the temperature is going to be normal because the blood has reached its destination. So it's gone all the way down through the foot. And it's coming up and then it's on the way back that it's getting stuck. Um, the tissues are going to turn brownish and flake out due to like old blood pooling in the area. So that's kind of why it gives this brownish discoloration. And on the boards, if they give you a picture, it's going to be very visibly honest, like obviously brown. If they're talking about an ulcer, they won't throw in lymphedema in there to throw you off. That's just rude um, because you could have everything going on with that. So you can see that they're it's really brown and you can see some of the skin if you like Look over here, especially here, you can see how it's flaking off um, and it's super dry, um, which is kind of ironic because the skin ends up being dry as there's like pooling and pooling of exudate coming out of the wound. Um, so pedal pulses with an arterial pedal pulse, you are not going to either feel the pulse at all. It's going to be completely absent or it's going to be a weak thready pulse. And those are the words that the boards like to use just because it's just, it's, their little way of describing it that they want to keep consistent with. Um, and this is because the blood flow is getting blocked wherever there's an insufficiency. So like that plaque buildup, the atherosclerosis could be causing it. And therefore blood is not getting to the foot and the pedal pulses. So remember over here with the, um, above the lateral malleolus, that the blood has not gotten all the way to where the um, dorsal pedal artery is on the top of the foot. So therefore, we're not going to really feel much in there. 
When all right, so with a venous insufficiency ulcer, blood has come all the way down the, the lateral side, it's coming up the medial side, then it gets stuck. So it's made it over top of the dorsal pedal artery that's located about right here where we palpate. And so therefore they have a pulse, it works because blood is getting blocked further downstream. It's like, oh, there's an exit. Uh, there's an accident at exit 54, but I'm only at exit 48. I can get off the highway. Like we we're good. We can still feel the pulse there because we're not to the point where it's all backed up. So veins do not have pulses. So we're not going to be palpating a vein for a pulse. So it'll be an artery and the arteries are fine. It's the venous. That's the problem. Now pain, this is the big one that the boards likes to talk about. There is severe, severe, severe pain with a uh, arterial insufficiency ulcer. So this is because like the blood flow is blocked and it's like kind of making like a tourniquet on the leg. So therefore like blood can't get anywhere. So it's like tourniquets are extremely painful. Obviously they're used only in emergency situations, but it feels like you have a tourniquet on your leg the whole time. That is a lot, a lot of pain. And if you stick that up in the air, it's going to feel even worse because essentially what it is, is blood flows going up and it's getting blocked. It's coming right back down. So blood Blood is not going where it's supposed to go. We're making blood go backwards and that's not good. So not good. Venous insufficiency ulcers, on the other hand, we want to elevate those like crazy. We want to make sure that they're up in the air all the time doing their little ankle pumps and then we can get some blood back to the heart. Now there might be some pain due to the fact that there's like swelling and discomfort. Um, could go up to like a moderate level of pain, but it's nowhere close to what arterial is. Like pff, nowhere close. So venous elevate arterial no no elevation with arterial so that's kind of how i remember it sample question guys a patient residing in a skilled nursing facility presents with an arterial insufficiency ulcer due to atherosclerosis what would the physical therapist assistant not expect to see when examining this ulcer one pain with elevation two hair loss around wound bed three irregular wound edges or four weak pedal pulses. I'll give you guys a second to think about that one. All right, guys. So the answer is a regular wound bed. A right. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, guys, so the answer is irregular wound edges. So this is due to the fact that that is a characteristic of a venous insufficiency ulcer. So what is something we would not expect to see with this person? So it's essentially saying which one of these is not a characteristic of a venous, I mean, of an arterial insufficiency ulcer. So as we go through, let's look at them. I like to use this as true false. So we have an arterial insufficiency ulcer which one of these is not a characteristic of an arterial insufficiency ulcer. Let's look at them. Pain with elevation. Yeah, that's a characteristic of an arterial insufficiency ulcer. We do not elevate arterial insufficiency ulcers. All right, number two, hair loss around the wound bed. Well, yeah, because there's not any blood getting to the area, so the hair is just going to die off. That's a characteristic of an arterial insufficiency ulcer. Number three, irregular wound edges. Okay, so this is one of those weird characteristics that we kind of aren't thinking about as much. We're more thinking like the pain with elevation, the pedal pulses and stuff. So let's go back to this one. And then number four, weak pedal pulses. Now, with an arterial insufficiency ulcer, you might have a weak pedal pulse or thready pedal pulse or no pedal pulse. Um, if it was an uh, venous insufficiency ulcer, you would have normal pedal pulses. So because it says weak pedal pulses, we would say, okay, that's something we might see with an arterial insufficiency ulcer. Let's go back to number three, irregular wound edges. Well, on an arterial insufficiency ulcer, let's go back to our pictures. We can see that they have a very clear, clear wound bed with um, very well-defined edges. And then over here on the venous, we can see that irregular shape there. So as we go back to our question, we can see that yes, an irregular wound edge would be a characteristic of a venous insufficiency ulcer. And therefore that is our answer because it's which one of these will we not expect to see. So we would be expecting to see a more smooth, well-defined wound edge. All right, guys, I hope that this was helpful in explaining some of the differences and what the boards kind of likes to talk about when it comes to arterial and venous insufficiency ulcers. If you have any questions, please let me know.
Take care, guys.